like to turn to a book of numbers. I very seldom teach out of numbers, I don't know why, but I just, there's certain things that stick out on me in numbers, and I'd like to share one with you this morning. It's mm -hmm. Numbers chapter 11. The, the children of Israel complained a lot and when they were coming out of Egyptian bondage and all. And I want us to look at 11th chapter uh, 11, 1 through 15. It's kind of a lengthy reading. And uh, who wants to read 15 verses for me? I'm going to read aloud the first 15 verses of 11th chapter of, of Numbers. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Taberah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before <coughs> our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of the bedellium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in meal, meals or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the mama, the manna, fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled breaking. Moses also was displeased, and Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore, wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight that thou layest the burden of all this people among me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, say, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. Well, I think well, that's a long reading, but uh, there's a lot you can teach on, on about that. The thought or the title, if you want to say a title or a subject on my mind is, that's it, I quit. So Dave, you ever want to quit something when you're working on a motorcycle and you get aggravated and upset and uptight and, and, and or on the job or something? You just want to quit? I often want to quit the railroad. <laughs> well, that, I was going to mention that about myself. But uh, they, you can get your job, let's take that for a minute, for a minute there, your job itself. It's a blessing from God to start with that you got a job. But we let the devil creep into us and and, and get us frustrated and upset. And I know I've been around at your house, David, and you'd be working on something, you'd just quit with it and walk off and leave it for a while. And that's the way we do it forever. If things start to aggravate you and, and, and getting you up tight, and you, people pressuring you, wanting, wanting the job done now, and you're trying to figure out how to do it, or something, the gas gets not fitting right, or bolts broke off or something, you get aggravated and you say, I would. I just won't quit. I'm tired of this. And and that you know, the devil's pleased when we do that. When when we just so I know when I was in service, I was in good shape. I mean, I just left football and high school I, was, I could run forever it seemed like. And when I got in the Navy and when I got in service, I wanted to quit. Now why was I wanting to quit? I wasn't in good shape. I could do anything they wanted me to do. But I wanted to quit because I was lonely. Have you ever been lonely? You can have a you can have a bunch of people around you and be a, that's the way it was in service. I had hundreds of men in the, our our company, but I was lonely. And I just wanted to quit and get out of the Navy right there. It wasn't because uh, you know, uh, I was wasn't in good shape or couldn't pass the test that we had to take a lot and all. But the loneliness there alone Will, will cause you to just want to give up and quit. 
I've been there and done that, and I'm sure you have too. Uh, <coughs> give me a somebody. Give me a, a good example of this one to quit. I know you got some. Uh, Our God, we don't mention that. We don't mention the church. I just want to quit there. But there's, there's a lot of different ways that uh, we just want to quit. Well, here in this 11th chapter, we're just going to start here. Uh, in the, what, verses 1 through 3 was a people problem for, for Moses. Now, it says two million people were out there whining and complaining. It tells us here that they were whining and complaining. They weren't satisfied at all with the way things were going. As a matter of fact, they said there were no graves in Egypt. We had cucumbers in Egypt. We had all these things back here in Egypt. There wasn't even nobody, no graves there. Now, we knew that was a lie from the devil. There were plenty of graves in Egypt when they said these words. But they, were, they didn't want to do what Moses was telling them, that what God was telling them to do. And they were whining and complaining and wasn't satisfied. And he had a, he had a people problem out there. You, you, can you imagine? Now Moses was a, a man just like we were, human. Human being, but he was called of God to do a specific task. And he went into Egypt and got the people out. And there they are crying and whining and carrying on. He had a people problem. Could you imagine having that two million people? I think it's around two million or so, but it's more than a million. And they're out there complaining against you. Hey, he was, he was ready to give up, quit. Matter of fact, he tells us later on we're going to get there. But he had a people problem. But we need to pray for people like that. Forgive people and love people when they got a people problem. Verses 4 through 9. These people didn't have a food line like you and I, or a Kroger's or a Harvey's or whatever. They didn't, but God was the provider for them. Four through nine, it tells us how that he was giving them manna. Now, I'm pretty sure when they got real, real hungry to start with, when that manna started falling down, they was gobbling up. Uh, we throw bread out there a lot of times in birds at the house and then the squirrels are gobbling up faster than the birds would and they pack it in their mouths and then they said, what in the world has he got in his mouth? I said, they pack it in. And, and that's what, he was saving them that food back. Well, that was bread, but I imagine they were trying to pack it in when they got real hungry out there in that desert in the wilderness. And, but then after a while, they got to whining and complaining again. God, you just sending us bread from heaven. We want some, some meat to eat. Well, did God answer their prayer? He, he says that I can't imagine birds flying at your nose. But that's the way he used that illustration there. He said quail that run out of their noses. They had eaten the quail meat. Now, he had a problem again there. So, but God was still providing through four through nine. He sent that manna. You know, Moses 10 through 15 now, if we read 10 through 15, he had a real big problem. He had, he was about to have a nervous breakdown. You ever seen anybody die right on the edge and just breaking and coming apart? Well, if you read this uh, 10 through 15 here, he said, uh, why Moses said in verse that verse uh, eleven or whatever it is, it says that they had afflicted me and they was a big burden. And then that fifteenth verse, he said, "Just kill me, Lord." Was he having a breakdown? He was. He was ready to quit and give up. He said, "That's it. I'm quitting." And he was on the edge of a nervous breakdown. And and God. He told him, he said, remember now me. If you remember me, things will be better. All we got to do is trust God, put our faith and confidence in God, and have faith in God. But we get to a point sometimes the devil gets us to not believe. The Bible tells us in many places uh, about believing. He says, I believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. Sometimes we unbelievers too. You don't think Satan don't know that? He knows where you stand on that. So devil, the devil is a, a 
loves a quitter. Though there's an old saying, uh, quitters never win and winners never quit. They use that in football camps a lot whenever we play football with you're a winner. They'll build you up and make you think you're a giant when you ain't big as nothing. But they'll work on you and it's in your heart is what they're going to tell you. Whatever you got in your heart, you, you're strong. Now, the opponent may be a lot bigger, just like the giant was to David. But that, that giant didn't mean nothing to David. He had that heart and he was going, he wasn't going to quit and he didn't quit. And there's a great reward from not quitting. But the devil loves to quit. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for a new season we will reap if we faint not. In other words, that faint not means don't quit. Don't quit. Job, did Job, was Job a quitter? He wasn't a quitter. At one point, he, he kind of was ready to give up. But Job was a faithful man. But in Job 3.3, 3, he says, Let the day perish wherein I was born. Was he about ready to give up then? Let the day perish? Even though he had, had the power of God, and he had, had that hedge about him, and God took the hedge down, and the devil wanted to take the hedge down, and all these things, he, God took it down, and he got weary because... The Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We got, we've talked about those two natures that we have all the time in, the, in this Bible study class. And we do get weary. And, and, and the spirit, well, I think it's Matthew 26, 41, it says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Job himself was getting uh, getting weary a little bit. It says, let the day perish for which I was born. He, he was at the give up point of life right there. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what was he called? A weeping prophet. You don't think that he seen all, well, he did see all the things that was going on with the children of God. And he tried his best to turn them around and do, to do what was right. And himself even got screwed into a pit. And he was called a lamenting, lamenting prophet. That means a crying prophet. He, he was crying for the people that they were ready to give up and himself was ready to give up. Over in, in uh, turn to the book of Psalms 137. Think about, don't be a quitter. Because they think it's going to happen around you that's going to make you want to quit. Just give up. But there's no hope no more. Psalm 63 is what I'm trying to say. It shows you how good a man of God is right at the point of breaking down and quitting. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And there are no bands <laughs> in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compass them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than a heart could wish. They are corrupt, and they speak wickedly concerning oppression, and they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people returned hither, and waters of, the, of a full cup were wrung out of them. And they say, How does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prospers in the world. They increased in riches. And barely I cleanse my heart in vain and wash my hands in innocence. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. I say, I will thus, behold, I should, I, if I say, I will thus, behold, I shall offend against the generation of thy children. 
When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went to the sanctuary of God, then I understood I therein. All right, stop right there. Do you see all this? This was a child of God, a man of God, that said, truly God is good to Israel. But then he, he was ready to just give up right there. He said, my feet are slipping. I see these people prospering in the world and everything they touch turns to gold, so to speak. And, and every day I'm just going further and farther and back. And he said, these are ungodly people that are prospering in the world. But then he says, he didn't understand until he went to where? The sanctuary of God. Which is what? Sure. The church. The church. Then he understood their end. That's what he said. We get like that. He was almost ready to give up. And then those children of Israel that hung their hearts on the willow tree, you remember them? That was the one I was trying to read by I think we was kind of intertwining the two, two together. And uh, but anyway, though they had hearts and they were told they were in slavery. And, and they said, sing us a song of Zion. And they didn't have a song in their heart because they were ready to quit. They were ready to give up and stop. So you see how that we can almost be a quitter or become a quitter and lose the joys of our salvation? Solomon himself, and he pleased to ask too, you know that well. How that he tried everything you could mention want. He had gardens, he had women, he had music, musicians, he had he kept trying to find happiness. Well where was his happiness going to be? In God. That's all the word. Happy is a man that findeth wisdom and giveth understanding. And that's a spiritual wisdom, not a natural wisdom. But there, the wisdom it's talking about there is we need to have wisdom and we'll be happy because these things of the world don't make you happy. You might think they do. I've said I've said that at Walmart several times and I thought about it. And what in this what do you want out of this store? And I I couldn't think of nothing I wanted. And nothing I needed. Now we had to have you know food and stuff and Dennis was out there getting food, milk and stuff like that, but as far as material, I told her the other day, we, we both, we had a big old jar of money and we turned it in, I like got 200 and something dollars with Dennis. She took a hundred and I took a hundred. Well, I still got $80 of it. I said, there's nothing I won't want. I mean, I, I, the other 20, I eat something, hamburgers and stuff, but there's nothing I wanted. Nothing really makes me satisfied in worldly things a lot of time. Now, I still have a problem with it a moment and moment. But the main point is things won't make you happy. And, and I, he, he almost wanted to quit and just give up and die. I thought about Elijah over there, how that Elijah had saw the power of God in the 18th chapter of Kings, I believe it is. And the fire come down and, and they had put water on the, in the ditches and all these things and the fire kind of licked that. He saw the power of God and then that one woman, Jezebel, caused him a lot of problems. Several times she caused him problems. But whenever Naboth had, had that vineyard and her husband, he was wanting it. Well, that was a problem at one point. But over and over and over there were problems come and they were ready to quit, to give up. And, and so Elijah goes out there and gets on a juniper tree and says, Lord, kill me. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to quit. I can't stand this no more. When you start studying God's Word and you start trying to walk the way God would have and follow after Jesus, guess what? You think you have some problems. And you're going, it's going to bear you just bury you down on you, but you need to look to the author and finish of your faith, and then you'll be all right. But we really to quit. We got two natures. You don't have times to quit. When I had cancer, when they first told me I had cancer, I said, I just immediately in my mind, I'm ready to give up. And then I finally come out of that. And and when I, actually when I started driving home, is when I, I asked myself a question. Are you are you going to trust in God to be with you, or are you going to trust in the devil? 
The devil was wanting to, he was wanting to bring me down. And that same question, you know, I mean, same statement is going to make come to you. But David, you may go to the doctor next week and say, David, you ain't got for five months. Well, you don't think that's going to dwell on your mind? You ready to give up and quit? Don't quit. Endure, the Bible tells us in Matthew, I believe, 24, 13, endure to the end and you'll be saved or delivered. Now, I know it's talking about at that time of Jerusalem, but if we endure to the end, everything's going to be all right. So, Elijah, old Jonah, I watched, I watched Hunter yesterday. We was, we was uh, over at Jake's. He's building a pole barn. Had several men out there working on them. And it was hot. And <laughs> Hunter went and got a big old, what was it, Jess, a piper? Anyway, it was something to drive in the ground. A, a, not a, a board, but I could, I was way away from it. But the sun was bearing down hot. And the boy ain't stupid. He went and got a big old board or something, drove it down in the ground because it was about this high. And he went missing for a few minutes. And he come back and he had a bunch of them old uh, palmetto bushes. And he started putting it on that pole and he made him a shade and got under that thing. <laughs> and I said, boy, you ain't stupid. You are kidding to me, for sure. <laughs> and uh, if you look at him when he comes back, you see this thing I look like Gorbachev. I got a hit in the head with a board. I ran into it. Well, Freddie and I went to town and come back, and guess who got hit in the head with a board? Hunter did. <laughs> so when he comes, he's going to have a place on his head. <laughs> but the main point is, old Jonah was ready to quit. He got under a tree, or, and, and he, he was wanting to die. Why was he wanting to die? Because he had, he had done run away from God and tried to hide from God and try to do what he wanted to. But God said, you're going to do what I said. And he put some pressure on him. And he was in trouble. And he wound up getting under a, that tree and ready to give up and die right there. We need to press forward to the mark of the high calling to do Christ Jesus. I know I'm rambling a lot, but they just, the main point is don't quit. Don't quit. There's a, there's a poem here that I copied. I don't know who wrote it or nothing, but I want you to listen to these words. It's about not quitting. It says, When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road when the road you trudging seems to be all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have a sigh. When care is pressing down a bit, Rest if you must, but don't quit. Success and failure turned inside out, the silver tent clouds of that. And you can never tell how close you are. It may be near and when it seems far. So stick to the fight when you and the heart is healed. When things go wrong, you mustn't quit. That says a lot right there. We're going to get to a point when some money and your family gets sick or or something like that, and you're going to get discouraged and depressed. The Bible tells us in Luke 9, 62, I believe it is, a man plowing should not look back. A, a man shouldn't look back when he's plowing. Why? We need, the Bible tells us, that we need to forget those things that are behind and press forward to the mark with the high calling, which is Christ Jesus. We don't need to quit. We need to keep on keeping on. Anybody got anything you want to say? Are you going to want to quit? Yeah. There's going to come, come, come time when we all want to quit things. <laughs> the older we get, we get discouraged too. We need to look to the Lord and the Lord give us the strength to continue. That's the only place you're going to get to. Get it to the truth. <laughs> you can go on and on with the ones that quit, but I, I think I think you see the picture how Job was really to quit, even though he's faithful. Jonah wanted to quit because he'd seen 
the other was doing good and Nineveh over there he didn't like it Elijah got scared run out there and wanted to just pressure too much but God will take care of you whatever it takes